This call is now being recorded. All right, we are live. Yeah, so uh, recently we were looking at this research paper on unmanned surface vehicle simulator with realistic environment disturbances. So they, these people seem to make uh, made a to have made a good simulator in Gazebo. Okay. Uh, who, uh, whose elements we uh, actually like some of them we can use it. So the major uh, abstract of the paper goes on like so. They are working on USV for different dif disaster scenarios. Mm -hmm. And in their simulation environment, they are looking at different USV models as shown in this picture here. So they have uh, different USV models with differential propellers, uh, single propeller and rudder, airboats and sailboats. So all these models are available in the Gazebo simulator. And also they are uh, considering the environmental forces from wind, current and waves and uh, uh, effectively model them I mean to a realistic manner so that's mm -hmm. what they claim in this paper and uh, so looking at this so what they are telling is uh, at the time of uh, when the paper was written they state that there was absence of any standard testing platform for the guidance navigation and control problems of an autonomous surface vehicle and uh, in this research work, they are trying to propose an open source simulator called as the USV Sim with improved buoyancy effects. And they are uh, integrating wind and water current models. Uh, we look at how they are doing this. This is slightly different. And they are also working with different USV models and uh, different scenarios. So in the paper, they have also compared uh, the field results with the uh, Simula I mean, with the simulator, but I didn't include that in the presentation. But uh, in the paper, they have looked at uh, of I mean, the, they have compared both the uh, re I mean, both the field trials and uh, the simulation results. And just for my curiosity, can you go back to the title? I would like to fetch the paper if I can. Yeah. Unmanned surface vehicle simulator with realistic environmental disturbances. Simulator realistic environmental differences. Oh, it's an MDPI journal, is it? Yeah, so okay. they, yeah, so they have their simulator open source as well. So we have the GitHub link to it also. Okay, all right. So uh, bef uh, before moving on, they have compared the different, uh, you know, uh, capabilities of the simulators that are existing before USV SIM. So USV SIM is the simulator that this research paper people have made. And these are the different existing simulators before. And the robotic simulator is actually the VRX simulator that we are using. Okay. So in robotic simulator, if we look at particularly, so these double ticks suggest that uh, it, uh, th these effects are modeled to a very good level. And a single tick actually represents that there are some things which are lacking, even though the uh, this feature is present. So for instance, in some simulators, uh, these waves are only uh, present for uh, visualization purposes, but those forces are not modeled directly onto the vehicle. So some simulators have those problems. So and the always means that they're not modeled, but they're visualized? Yeah, kind of. I'm not sure whether it's always, because in robotic simulator, uh, I believe the waves are modeled, right? Yes, wave forces and waves. <coughs> They're modeled, okay. Yeah, in UW Sim and free floating gazebo, they are not, they, they are only used for visualization purpose because uh, these are kind of simulators which are more used for AUVs, I believe. So they didn't consider modeling it directly, I think so, but yeah. So and, I have a quick question here, and I think, uh, uh, so, okay, so when you compare one of them as gazebo, 
Yeah. Isn't gazebo the basis for some of these other ones? Ah, yes, sir. So gazebo will be like the central unit, and there will be a uh, gazebo in itself will not have these capabilities, but it will be combined with the other simulators that are made. So you can consider these as some plugins which are added onto gazebo to make this simulator. Something ah, like that. okay, okay, okay. And what is this V V rep? Does it have a good Rep, I, yeah, I can take a look at the paper. I don't remember exactly. Mm. Yeah, VREP, I, I don't remember them ex, uh, talking about it in detail actually. Vallabha Raditya, do you remember about I do not know, sir. Okay. No. It's a tile scalable robot simulation framework. That's what it stands for. Yeah, I believe they didn't discuss much about VREP in this. Yeah, this is a Japanese conference paper in IROS. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, okay, so moving on. Uh, so uh, this was their architecture that they used in uh, UW sim that they have made. So they are importing elements of other simulators as well here. So Gazebo will be the central unit. And inside that, they have the foil dynamics plugin and improved free floating plugin. So free floating Gazebo is another simulator that was made. And they have improved, improved it slightly and they have included it along with Gazebo and they have uh, customized the package on wind current and water current and mm -hmm. all these packages are in communication with Gazebo and UWSIM will be their basis for uh, wave modeling so given the pose of the USV this UWSIM will return the wave height at that particular location so they will be using that along with the free floating plugin to model the different forces or in, inside gazebo and how they are modeling it we'll be discussing in subsequent slides as well so they have included so, how they have improved it everything so uw sim is only composing of finding out the wave height at a particular location yeah so in this current paper they are just using it for that purpose but uw sim in itself as a as its uh, own simulator which are made which are being used specifically for a simulation of EAUVs, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, but that component of solving the differential equation, they are not taking that from UWC. Ah, uh, no, so they are only t uh, getting the wave heights from UWC. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, and, and the uh, plugin, what all does it do? Yeah, so this is the one which calculates the Bion C wind force and water for i mean water current force and wind current forces so this this package will return the uh, wind current and water current values at that particular location on mm -hmm. uh, giving a service call so these are like this, these are separate packages and they act as servers so this improved free floating plugin is like a client so given uh, giving a call it will be able to get the current values at that time instant at that position oh okay okay so it will calculate the exact position of the wind and the current at that current location of yeah and and at that the time and at the time instant so uh, so actually we have to give the details of this wind current and water current uh, using any CFD software. So we have to import data from those softwares and we have to input in uh, into these packages. So what it will do is it will look at, I mean, depending upon the uh, simulation time, it will give in the corresponding values. Oh, this takes it from CFD package. Yeah. So that you have to run them separately and you have to give the data. So that's how they model in, in this paper currently. Oh, so like atmospheric modeling or yeah. a ocean yeah. modeling is done separately. Yeah. And that feeds in the information at the current location. Correct. So for, I believe for wind, they are using data from open foam. 
and for water current uh, there is another package that they yeah i think i don't remember the software name but yeah this one ras hydrological simulator oh okay all right so for wind they are importing data from open form mm -hmm. okay all right got it yeah so this, wow, this thing is really powerful yeah so now so this uh, for uh, looking more into how they model the different forces so they are modeling can hydro can, can you go back to the previous just for for a second yes. okay i didn't pay attention to the arrows okay so these are uh, ross service and then there is something called ross topics and then ocean service to ross ocean vehicle yeah so that is the what do you call i think they, uh, they have developed this communication thing so this is like uh, i mean this is the one which is, uh, returns the wave height from uwc so in a sense this is also a topic actually. okay 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 so that's also a ross topic so it yeah. really works under hood so gazebo does it work off of a ross naturally or do we have to do something in order to get uh, so in in gazebo we just give the force value at that time instant so gazebo has its own methodology under the hood under the hood to uh, calculate how the responses are happening ah okay so it, it basically solves the differential ah. equation in the hood yeah but uh, so it only requires feeding of the forces yes and you have to say right ashwin ashwin uh, that's what right we looked we looked at that time yes yes there's something called there was like apply force function right mm. okay but you also have to specify all the mass parameters and other things in yeah. the two separately yes you have to define the body you have to define the body like okay all right okay all right okay go ahead one minute yes, so this is how they are modeling the forces so they have these hydrodynamic force hydrostatic force wave force wind force and the control and propulsion force along with the thruster dynamics so these are the different plugins which are responsible for calculating the different forces so this and will be i have included slides of how they are doing that okay so first looking at the final foil dynamics plugin so mm -hmm. this is how they have modeled the uh, rudder uh, forces and uh, they they have specified that uh, so there is another existing package in uh, for gazebo which does not i mean which will calculate this lift and drag forces but it will not have this apparent velocity at that uh rudder distance i mean at that rudder location okay but here they have modified that package in such a i mean plug in in such a way that this one is more accurate in this case so okay. we are we are feeding in the apparent velocity at the location of the rudder so that's the change they have made here because the previous plug in was not specific to marine applications it was more generic for both arrow i mean for both uh, i believe aerial and can be used also for marine applications so in the computation of this force va is an input which we provide uh, i don't remember that exactly but uh, that's i don't remember that uh, well yeah, do sir i told you about it right they calculate va using uh, it's I think it's some empirical equation. I think it's given there. Yeah, yeah. I remember it's. Yeah, here. Yeah. So, this one. Yeah, V X is V T times cos of alpha t minus i minus u plus r times n. What is n? Uh, center of effort of foil is at position m n and o. Center of foil is in position. I don't think it's empirical, Ashwin. I think it is physically right, kinematically correct. They are looking at what is the angle of attack 
of the true wind and then comparing with your heading angle taking the difference that becomes the apparent angle of attack and from that they are computing in the surge and the sway direction what is the velocity components mm, yeah 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 i don't think uh, it is yeah, yeah it's, it's not according to the mg model the mg model is not. yeah the only thing here is that uh, this is uh, if this is the force on the rudder the only like it's not taking into like the propeller correct it's not taking into account the propeller interaction of with the rudder it's not yes. taking into account but if we change vt to reflect that and that that's the job yeah 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 right if we if we manually change vt and provide it with vt then we can make that happen okay but okay we'll first see what is there and then we'll decide what to do with it yeah so out of all the simulators this was the one which are modeling rudder dynamics actually other simulators didn't care about these rudders so we should add a point to our requirements based on correct that. correct correct but this can be a good starting point is what we yes yes we may be able to modify certain things in it yeah. our need correct okay all right understood right so moving on so yeah so in the slide we will be talk looking in looking about the improvements that they have made in the USW sim and the free floating gazebo plugin so as i mentioned before gazebo in itself will not have the simulation for waves and current so they are using uw sim which in uh, which in which waves are rendered by the library that they have that they have made uw sim i mean yeah in uw sim just a second yeah in uw sim they have uh, they have a library called ost ocean which models the waves and but uh, in their ocean, in their uh, uh, in their simulator there is no passing of this information while modeling the forces so what what currently the these people have done is they have tried uh, they have made this communication that's what this is called as this ocean surface to ross ocean vehicle uh, vehicle thing so they have made a topic such that uh, the wave heights are being communicated at a particular instant of time to this free floating gazebo plugin which calculates the wave forces and also uh, they are uh, in this picture in this picture uh, was actually nice so uh, this is how the simulation look before when there is no communication of the wave height to the free floating gazebo where the forces are calculated so as you can see uh, you cannot visualize the movement of the boats along with the wave so Correct. in this uh, picture b they have they have included the communication but the whole vessel is represented as a single link so the the forces are calculated at their uh, center of i mean center of gravity right so their forces will be model at their center of gravity but if we divide the hull into different links then at each of the center of gravity of the links these forces will be model and thus we can get a more realistic simulation is what they are uh, approach for this problem mm -hmm. so when they say this modeling into six different parts yeah these joints are rigid joints yes sir they are rigid joints so i am wondering why there is no rigid joint between the two portions in the front and two portions in the aft yo this one yeah that uh, i'm not really sure but Sir, I think you can only have one joint. Yeah, I think so. No, but the link in the between has three joints connected to three different things. No. Yeah. Probably. I think it's just like the parent link and the child link. No, it possibly might be that it's a rigid link and that suffices to make it rigid enough. Yeah, that's what maybe. The, no, but. Uh, don't oh that defeats the purpose 
Uh, actually, this will not move anywhere, right? Because it's fixed to this link. So even if we have a fixed link between these two links, I hope it will not matter since it cannot move anyways. No, but uh, these joints are all rigid. Then that means that the ship is acting as a point mass. So there is no point of computing forces on individual pieces then. Uh, no, sir. I, I believe Gazebo, so Gazebo will calculate the force that is acting on these, I mean, all the links separately. Okay. So that's the reason they are actually doing this. Okay, it calculates the things separately. Yeah. And then? So instead of a single force acting on the center of gravity, now three forces will be acting at, I mean, not three, six forces will be acting at the center of gravity of each of the links. And that will determine how the vessel pitches and heats. Ah, yes. So it gives some better, uh, I mean, both for simulation. And I think the forces model will anywhere it remain the same. But it's more of for uh, better simulation purposes, what I believe. Okay. Am I right, Vallab, or Nashin? Yeah, like uh, that day we were discussing about this only that uh, yeah. it is more related to like seeing it uh, roll and all. Yeah, it's more related to visualizing how the vessel actually behaves. Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, it's like a less complex version of Hydra because in Hydra we are like splitting at that's that's what it seems like okay it's like a six portion as if i've modeled this hull into the six pieces yes. of the, all the panels which we were using right yes it has to run in real time right so okay but our thing can also run in real time only thing is uh, yeah okay Right. Okay. Okay. Fine. Let's go forward. Okay. Yeah. So, Please. yeah. So the next few slides is regarding the wind and current models. As I told before, they are importing data from the CFT softwares. So for each time, and so they have to model this situation, this scenario, and how the wind and wave currents we require. So that has to be modeled beforehand. Uh, using this, using a CFD software, uh, they they, uh, they have used a couple of softwares. One is HECRAS Hydrological Simulator and Open Form for getting this data. So now I'm I mean this what this in essence will have is at different X and Y locations of the uh, X and Y position of the scenario that we are looking at at uh, different time instants the wind and wave velocities data will be uh, imported and so depending upon the simulation time that data will be called upon using the service using a service call and uh, free floating plugin and uh, uh, this foil dynamics plugin will get those data and calculate the wind and wave forces on the respective uh, sails or uh, rudders okay how it goes so having looked at this so the paper this ends the discussion on the papers but the paper uh, has a lot of details lot more details on uh, the actual free trial comparison with the simulation results oh okay so the this is just the half the paper so uh, rest I didn't include in the slides, but there are a good amount of information about how the simulation results are there. Oh, simulated in real, they have made some comparisons. Yeah. Did they make trajectory comparisons in addition to just the speed comparison? This is the trajectory of a differential okay.
water only okay i think these are all simulation results if i'm not wrong uh, yeah i believe so mm -hmm. let me see let me check what's this this So there is no experimental validation that what they have modeled, how does it compare against reality? Oh, I remember looking that part. They were comparing with actual results, right, Olive? Mm. Does it seem like it? Yeah, maybe around so. What is this figure number 12? Distance, meter, start, finish. Okay. The section 4.3. Section 4.3, is it? 4.3, comparison between physical and simulated reports. The lake was used for to test, is located at this and has an area of this. The distance from the base station to the lake is 6.1 kilometers. Okay, so guaranteeing optimal GPS corrections. Oh, this is RTCM via internet protocol. Yeah, this is the part which I was hoping to internet based correction. That is the one which we are not getting for Indian subcontinent. Simulated boats, on the other hand, have an advantage of perfect localization using velocity analysis. Okay, so their main effort was to check whether the speed comparison was correct or not. Mm, yeah. But other things, mm. I guess they didn't. They might have, but it's not reported here. That's uh, all. Maybe. Yeah. The physical boats were equipped with Emlet's uh, Reach RTK global positioning system. It is configured to re receive the corrections from a public base station provided by IBG. Uh, Unfortunately, I have looked at the India's this positions. Most of them are still limited to North India. We don't have base stations in South of India yet, which are operational for GNSS public base correction systems. Uh, okay. So, which is why we will need to develop our own base station. Unfortunately, yeah. So they, they transmit over this internet protocol. So then what happens, you don't need another base station. Mm. You can just plug and play one equipment on the craft and it will automatically get the corrections directly to it, relate to it. But that somehow does not seem to be possible with our case. Okay, their area is about 85 by 55. I think it's kind of similar to what our area would be. Our area would be maybe a hundred cross hundred or hundred cross one fifty. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. The distance between the base station and this is about six kilometers. And they've given okay, PW values, okay, to move the boat straight ahead, okay. During the test, the GPS got more than ninety-nine percent of fix. Best GPS signal generating excellent accuracy. There was no significant wind at the test location. Okay. All right. Okay. Fantastic. During the test, although looking at the boat, we thought it was still the GPS RTK captured a small velocity of about 0.1. Key boats was not shown. This chart shows both the simulated and the real boats were accurate in terms of velocity variation. Okay. So they are able to measure 0 0.03 meters per second, 0 0.03. Standard deviation is this. Huh, pretty good actually. Yeah. 
Do we have the specs for this also in our sheet? No, no. This particular thing we don't have. Okay, maybe it might be worthwhile to look it up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's first continue our discussion and then we we'll come back to that topic. Yes. Yeah. So looking at the simulator, uh, we we thought of uh, architecture. So currently we are working on VRX uh, simulator, mm -hmm. but so the the simulator that was made by that research paper is actually in kinetic, and so and also uh, another thing that we felt was they are using UW sim only for uh, making this wave environment. So. And uh, the the way I mean, so what we thought was, we'll be trying to uh, modify the simulator from the VRX directly, but we'll be importing the foil dynamics plugin that these people have made. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this KCS description and KCS gazebo will be the packages which will be simulating the KCS in gazebo with necessary dynamics. And this USV gazebo plugins package will have foil dynamics plugin, thruster dynamics, etc. I mean, the, the thruster dynamics is actually already, I mean, the VRX people have made a plugin for thruster dynamics. So that we can use. And there are other uh, plugins for these as well. And also in VRX, they are using a package called Wave Gazebo and Wave Gazebo plugin for modeling the environment. Hmm. So what we felt was we can directly use this plugin instead of using UWSYN just for creating the wave environment. And in fact, we can easily modify this Wave Gazebo and Wave Gazebo plugin to our requirement in future. So currently they are modeling PM spectrum waves. So mm -hmm. we'll be able to write our own algorithm for other types of waves as well. So that we can use. If required, we can look at how they are, uh, I mean, for calculate modeling the different forces, we can use the free floating gazebo plugin if required. Otherwise, we can actually use how uh, we can follow the same trend of how they are uh, calculating the forces. So in VRX, we have this package called USV gazebo plugins. Mm -hmm. where all the dynamics are modeled. Okay. So if we have to include the rudder dynamics plugin, this is the place we want to include. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, other uh, dynamics are actually being uh, uh, modeled here. So Bionzi is modeled here and uh, they, they in, in this, uh, so Bionzi is modeled to a good level in robotics similar. So we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, USV gazebo dynamics and thruster dynamics, thruster plugin, I mean, these two plugins are the one which actually takes care of the KCS vessel. I mean, it will take care of the KCS vessel dynamics. And this is where we have to change according to our requirements. Okay. And here, along with it, we'll, we were planning to use the foil dynamics plugin that these people have made. So these two codes that you are showing me here, and those are not compiled, right? Those are editable codes. Yes, sir. These are editable codes. So this will make the library. So on compiling this, we'll be getting a library with dot so extension, dot so. Okay, okay. Okay. So that will be acting like a plugin. So when we uh when so the, the this package will is wholly uh proposed for creating these plugins alone. And in KCS Gazebo, we'll be calling all these plugins. KCS Gazebo, right? Yeah. In KCS Gazebo, we'll be calling all these plugins and assemble our result. So we have to assign our rudder model to this rudder dynamics plugin, something like that. Uh, so we have to create a plugin and assign that to the uh, geometry. Correct. That's it. Okay. Okay. And Wave Gazebo, I mean, similarly, what Wave Gazebo is doing is Wave Gazebo plugin creates the plugin for uh, Wave environment. This Wave Gazebo will just call this Wave Gazebo plugin and make an environment. That's it. Ah, okay. And that also we will need some modification for our yeah, purpose. So in Wave Gazebo plugin, uh, uh, 
they are currently making a pm spectrum wave mm -hmm. yeah so uh, uh, we have seen where we have to change actually mm -hmm. so yeah so this is where they are actually modeling the pm spectrum wave so here whatever uh, wave model we want to do we can put that here ah okay so we can change that there and then we can accordingly recalculate yeah correct okay and foil dynamics plugin is the only one we thought we'll be importing from that and we'll also we are also plan to look at uh, the free floating gazebo plugin that the research paper suggested in which they are calculating the different forces how they are calculating we probably will see and if required we were thinking to import some kind of some details from that also this uh, plugins can only be created in c++ is it ah uh, that i haven't looked at sir but that is that that is something we have to look because if it is the whole project is in c right sorry the whole project is in c right everything is in c c++, c++. Plus plus. i don't think you can change it to python i am not really sure ross ross can actually do that right it can take certain plugins in c and certain plugins in python i'm not sure knowing whether that is possible yeah i think that is something to look at also the red dynamics should be follow the mmg ah uh, that is we have to modify all these uh, packages according to the mmg model that correct. is correct correct we will have to modify them according to our need correct yeah okay and so yeah so this this is the overall thing that we concluded so we have to look at how uh, uh, the mmg model uh, how they are modeling it once mm -hmm. and all these will be uh, will be going into the csv gazebo dynamics plugin.cc file in the usv gazebo plugin package and foil dynamics we have to modify it according to the mmg model and we will be putting that in the usv gazebo package and similarly we this was the plan that we kind of came up with so this, the, the different files to be modified and the package that they have to be in so the description file is we have to introduce a new description kcf description yeah so kcs description will be having the uh, urdf file of the vessel okay and in kcs gazebo we will be assembling the vessel along with the rudders and uh, thrusters mm -hmm. and assigning those plugins as well okay and we can make the rest of the packages which will make the i mean which will just put all the i mean the put the wave environment the vessel on it and our custom algorithms mm -hmm. okay so those packages we haven't uh, included that yet but those i mean we have to create our own packages for our all our uh, uh, navigation localization control so from the thruster and the foil dynamics uh, can you go back to the presentation slide just want to check that okay in uh, usb gazebo thrust plugin dot cc okay usb gazebo plugin package and thrust dynamics in case us gazebo package Okay. Yeah. So this is where it will be called upon, and this is where we should be changing. Okay. Okay. So we are going to add mostly things to the USB gazebo with respect to thruster and foil. Thruster and foil, and also we have to change uh, the different coefficients for the vessels. Also, I believe so that has to be done right. So. Correct. Uh, so that all this will come under this USB gazebo plugins. in this particular file usv gazebo dynamics mm -hmm. so this is where they are setting all the parameters for the vessel actually okay 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 got it got so we can we have to change this for the respective mm -hmm. okay okay sounds good the architecture looks correct okay so to me it looks okay 
thing. But only thing is, if we could make it in Python, the advantage is we could reuse some of the code we have existingly written. Correct. That is, we have to program from scratch again in a new language. Yeah, exactly. So that we will have to look at. So we'll come up. With, we'll take a look at it and probably get back. Okay, so Python plugins is what we want to know. Yeah. And also wind and current more, uh, force, we have currently not included any plans for it. But uh, because in this paper, they are actually importing from CFT software, right? So modeling... We require that actually. Yeah, we won't be requiring. So we didn't concentrate much on that. If required, we'll talk up. I mean, we'll include that later. Agree. Fair enough. I think that is a fair way of doing it or we can kind of include it in a simpler manner. Mm. Like uh, we have discussed there. Where, where have we discussed this? Yeah, so in, in VRX, they are already modeling the wave current in a simple fashion. So they are just taking a linear kind of some force, I believe. Uh, to be precise. So, in VRX, they have they are modeling current for uh, water currents, which is a constant force over time and space. So, maybe we can kind of develop something like this. If I think we can do better than that, uh, and I think if I'm not wrong, Sanjeev and uh, Rohit added some modules of this in the in the controller which they were working on. Mm, yeah. Right, Sanjeev. Uh, yes, sir. Only wind forces we have tried. Okay. Wind forces we have it there, and I think current also will not be much different. We can program that. So some simpler methods to program it we can do, rather than doing it the complicated way. Right. right. So, but that's a that's not on the top priority. I think what should be on the top priority should be calm water case, uh, and with waves. If we can simulate, that will be great enough. Okay, all right. That is good, well and good. How do we do the division of labor? Um, that's what the next thing is, actually. Uh. Right, we have to kind of uh, try to break it up into smaller pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, which... so this, this, was the, this is the overall work, sir, of what we have to do. So mm -hmm. we have to divide this accordingly. Correct, okay. Who are there volunteers who want to take up each mantle so that we can kind of combine them? And, and before we do that, Manoranjan, the other thing is uh, how much of a handshake between these four tasks will be required? Or does that have to happen only at the end? Um, yes, sir. It, it will mostly be happening at the end. So these three tasks, I mean, the, uh, these four tasks can be done separately and at the end we'll be able to, we have classified it in such a way that this can be done independently. Yeah. But at least when we are looking at it, I think the importance will be like in an API development methodology, you have to make sure that what the output of that module will be in a certain format, you have to agree on that ahead of time. So that yeah, in correct. whatever they can do, it should finally oh, come out oh, and shake it with the correct dynamics. Correct, correct. So that uh, that things we have to plan it out. But overall, I believe because if you look at thruster dynamics and foil dynamics, they are specifically acting only upon the thrusters and the rudders. But we probably might have to include some rudder propeller interaction here also. So Correct. those things, when required, we can collaborate or that should be the, we should kind of plan more. Of no, I think we should plan that ahead of advance so that all the variables that need to go into a module are planned ahead of time mm. and they are passed and whether we use it or not is a separate feature. Okay. Understood. We may not use it in the beginning, we may improve upon it as time progresses. But we need to specify. Okay, all right. So some division of labor on these yeah, four. Yeah, so required. Thing is, there is. 
Correct. So how do you, you guys propose to go about this? Any ideas? So for division of labors, we thought we'll be meeting after, I mean, we thought to discuss about this after we had a meet with you. Hmm. That is true. I think yeah, we'll we also need to look at like, tell me, tell me what are the, what are the updates going on inside all of this? Then we'll decide. What are the? Like how the structure is of this uh, files. Then we can decide. Then we can decide. It. Correct. I think it is too early to pinpoint on that and go for it. Okay. So then shall we say that we will take a look at this and come back next week with a preliminary plan and then we'll try to sit our, scratch our heads together to see whether we can come up with a plan to integrate them and then separate out the tasks. Yeah. Yes, sir. So that individually if we can form four teams within our guild to look at each of the problem statements. Correct. We can do that. Okay. And also in my free time, actually, I tried modeling the lake. So this is how the lake looks. Oh, wow. Wow. And I can do that better, actually. Like this, this is more of how to uh, using the blender. So those things has to be, I mean, uh, we should know that part. Uh, but uh, with some basic knowledge, this is how the lake looks. Now. Uh, how did you get this shape? I actually, it, this image is from the Google Maps. So I took a screenshot of it. Okay. So, yeah, so I actually made, uh, took a screenshot of the lake in Google Images. I mean, Google Maps. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of have to trace it around manually. Oh. So if you can, I think you can see the black line in this. Yes, yes, I can see it. So you uh, trace so, that manually. Yeah, so we have to trace that manually and export it to a .svg file. OK. So from .svg file, it is actually possible to uh, model it 3D, I mean in 3D it seems. So I oh. looked at a video which converts the SVG files to 3D files, I mean to dot .dae or whatever in Blender. So in Blender, but we have to, you know, kind of, I mean, convert it into meshes. So those things we have to do it in Blender and we'll also be, and it is also possible to add textures to it. So. To make it more realistic, we can actually add this particular texture onto the uh, onto our mesh file directly. But that I haven't uh, looked at it in detail. But it's possible to model. But it's more or less easy, sir. Once we know how to uh, work with Blender and stuff, it should be easy. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Creating the, I mean, I mean, creating the lake environment shouldn't be that difficult. Is what I it mean. is the dynamics which will be more difficult as you yeah. perceive. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds. Yeah. So we can uh, spawn the this model with the wave environment and gazebo in it. So, but modeling the dynamics of the USC will be the one that we have to look. Okay, all right. Surprisingly for me, I I have an opposite feeling that it is the visualization which is usually the more challenge for me. Yeah. The dynamics I always feel is a little easier. Mm. But let's see. Then Gasiva will handle the visualization for us here. Here it will handle the visualization for us? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. If you guys are confident, I am confident. The dynamics part, I'm not too worried. I think we can we can make that work. It's not that challenging. We should be able to make that happen. Okay, sounds good. Also, can we look at, uh, before we move off of the topic, uh, any other uh, suggestions or comments from the others? So, so sir, currently I have been working on this uh, KCS description file. Ah. So, like, uh, we were able to make that uh, KCS uh, model float on uh, like just like in the VRX thing. Correct. So uh, 
now uh, we have to separate the piece for rudder propeller and the uh, hull so like different uid files for all three and then uh, to model the dynamics yeah. so then, then we have to integrate them right okay all right so we are able to get the kcs to float right now is what you mentioned right yes so last time there was something funny going on and it was the way it was in the rudder or something like that yes yes uh, like i will send share the video uh, currently how it is okay okay yeah, yeah please do yeah actually gazi what that funny stuff if we don't assign this collisions collision geometry those things if you don't assign it properly it does some funny stuff which will be difficult to debug oh so okay. that and last time it was just a small thing but it was difficult to identify some oh is it okay okay all right let's see are you able to see my screen this is the video which Allah has just now shared. Eh? Oh, the vessel actually falls from above. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I spawn it a little bit above. Okay. And now is it moving forward? No, no, it's fixed uh, over there only. Why does it apparently feel? Oh, okay, okay. It's just moving up and down, bobbing up and down, and doing its thing. But it feels from the top as if it is moving forward, right? The waves are moving, actually. Oh, there are waves in the environment. Yeah, small yes. waves. Like this, this kind I of motion. This, yeah, this uh, forward, backward. That thing is happening. That is because, uh, like, uh, that is actually a uh, problem thing. Like, uh, it should not do that. Okay. That forward, backward thing. Yeah, like uh, in the start, it was doing this vibration in. forward backward like direction that that should not happen but is it happening because there is uh, no damping in the dynamics is, is that my dynamics like... are not modeled properly at its with it as what the vrx vehicle as the dynamics are according to that so some problem it it may be because of that yeah okay but there don't seem to be any waves that was my point you see especially yeah, 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 right. at this point yeah yeah there is absolutely no waves i think that's just an apparent feeling because the cloud cover is moving yeah, on yeah the clouds are moving <laughs> yeah. okay like, uh, this vessel is now currently like uh, fixed in place at that point like when i try to uh, give some force from sideways mm -hmm. it doesn't move like, it is staying fixed over there it's staying fixed over there huh yeah how <laughs> oh. <laughs> like something needs to be changed uh, to make like like uh, make it move from one place to the other hmm. i mean mallab i i if you are able to get it up to this point i'm fairly confident we should be able to solve that problem yes. i somehow still believe that the dynamics problem is much easier than the visualization problem <laughs> yes <laughs> okay but this is great work so i think we now have at least uh, so if this one has the rudder and the propeller too right i i think i saw that in the video somewhere yes uh, like currently they are all three of them are in the same urdf file but now uh, we need to separate them because dynamics will act differently on three right correct, correct correct so we have to act we have to make but the rudder seems to be extending below the hull that's i think the stock must go up or something oh okay, yeah Okay, okay. All right, and then we have the propeller, which seems to be considerably small, considering the rudder. <laughs> yeah, I think most of the scaling is uh, uh, wrong. Like importing from fusion into ROS, the scaling. Correct. The scaling might have been off. Yeah, Manu, can you explain how the scaling works? <laughs> no, I, I'm not really sure, because the model that we currently have. the it was for imported from fusion but when we import it into gazebo mm -hmm. uh, there is some issue with the units or something that i'm not really sure but uh, so meet meet uh, meet uh, i mean from gazebo 
whatever file we have is i mean what the dimensions in the of the same file in gazebo is 1000 times more than that it might be millimeter to meter conversion or something on that yeah side. something but when we are exporting from fusion i believe it was exported in meters only yes uh, like fusion's numbers are in uh, that uh, when we uh, like make the fusion file we assign the unit right that that number was in uh, mm so that 3000 was there ah, okay. but then when it came to gazebo uh, it it became uh, kilometers meters mm. yeah how uh, have you tried uh, rescaling it in blender blender seems to work yeah no i haven't tried it it yeah. should yeah it should yeah, be try that Uh, I just uh, in the URDF I uh, mentioned the scale in all directions as zero point zero zero one, so that scaled it down to this this size. So the actual three hundred meter size. Huh. Okay, okay. All right. So if there is some scaling issue which we need to be careful about when importing the geometry. All right. Understood. Okay. All right. So let shall we do one thing then that. Uh, we will everybody will take some time to go through the gazebo models a little bit and uh, next week we can meet and try to understand how to separate the architecture and what exactly are the files and where we want to put our things and what should be the handshakes which should be put in place so that when everybody finishes their part everything starts to work without having much issue yes sir okay let's maybe take some time and think about it and i'll also try to take a look at it and but i need some help from you guys in order to get up to speed on some of this okay but i'm going to try to see some of our previous videos also i think uh, we discuss some of this information in more detail so i'm trying to i'll try to pick it up from there and see how we can move forward okay sounds good now anything else on that front or shall we talk about the sensors yeah i think we are done with them okay excellent so how many people do we have in the guild maybe seeing 17 minus 1 16 people here and we might be missing a couple possibly So we have a pretty good size of people. I think if we split it up, it will be at least four to five people per group. We should be able to manage for each task, roughly, yes, right? Correct. We can put in each team four people, and then we can try to take that forward. Let's try to think about it, and next week we'll try to see if we can make the split and start working in each direction. Yes. All right. Let's take a look at the sensors. Yeah. So this study of the gazebo and that paper, who all were involved in it? Just want to know for my clarity. Um, myself, Vallabh, uh, Ashwin, uh, Aditya. So I believe Sanjeev also took uh, uh, read up the paper. So not sure if I missed anyone else. We actually put it in the group one day. Mm -hmm. So anyone others had the chance to look at it? Did the others have a chance to look at it somewhat? Anyone else? No, nobody else took a look at the paper. All right. In that case, would the others like to take a look at the paper? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. What about our second years? Yes, sir. Yes. Don't hide behind the talk. Yes. Okay. Why? Why don't we all take a look at the paper and understand what he has presented today, and try to understand the architecture and come back, 
and then i would like to split you guys into four different teams please understand that this is not a this is not a class project where i will necessarily force you into it if you are really interested in it and whoever is coming up with the interest next time those people we will split them into the teams and we'll put them okay the whole idea is that there should be a passion not something which we force through the guild but just imagine i mean for me it's a amazing thing to come together just imagine that you are able to simulate a vessel visualize a vessel and put sensors on it do things in the zebo which you could try out on simulation basis based on that we purchase the required equipment put it on the real vessel take it to the lake repeat the same thing and see whether we are able to see the same thing in action or not so you learn something in theory but you also get to see it practically to me that's that's a dream it's really really fun to see something like that happen right so if if you are kind of buying into the dream uh, let's come back next week and try to see if we can make this a reality the more hands the more people that come together you'll see that actually the learning curve is much faster we don't have to spend so much time and i think manoranjan has already boiled it down to very specific tasks which we can pick up and then work on it and try to go forward so how many people are interested in this yes sir i am interested sir yes sir great Yes, sir. Even I am. Yes, sir. I am interested. Yes, sir. I am interested. Okay, excellent. In that case, then let's kind of take some time to go through the stuff which he has presented today. And uh, Manoranjan, maybe what you can do is you can put up the paper again, so that just so that it is available in an easier way. Yeah, some of the students joined after the paper was put as well. So correct. So put it up now, uh, and I think Aditya has just put it in the link here. i think you have shared it there as well so once you are there you can go ahead and take a look at it and let's come back next week with more ideas i want uh, people to not be workers i want you guys to dream in it i want you guys to contribute with your own ideas of how we should take that forward and then we will synergize those ideas into a plan and take that forward that's the idea i want to kind of see if we can make this a reality before may so that these guys who are about to graduate they too can see it in action before they leave okay that that's my vision for the semester if you will if you buy into it let's come back next week and hit at it and try to discuss the work plan out of it sounds good for everyone yes sir yes sir oh, excellent Okay, Manoranjan. Let's go to the sensors also, so that we kind of get a sense of how the sensors are. Okay, I'll present my screen again. Mm. Yeah. So these were the specific things we looked at. Okay. Uh, one second. Did uh, Vishwa add his sensors? I is Vishwa here? I didn't see him in the meet. He said he'll be adding it yesterday. But... Hello? No, I don't think he added. Okay, he might not. He might have missed it. Yeah, I think it's probably a bit. Yeah, we'll... okay. Yeah, uh, this. Yeah, these are the sensors that we took a look at. So these are spe uh, specifically for INS systems, sir. So, so do you like? do are you planning to purchase an imu as well or do we have a imu already so See, are, hmm. my point is that the imus on the phones are fantastic correct that's true they are they are pretty good actually hmm. under central it's a cheaper smartphone i am finding that most of the good phones generally have a very good ins uh, the imu on it so i am not really inclined about the imu right now because we have a working model where we can get the imu data process it into ros and get into the raspberry pi all that part has been tested okay then the problem is the gps also is there from the phone but, but its update rate is very low correct 
right? And Vishwa was saying that if we have, with the update rates, what is happening is the trajectory is jumping as the GPS update comes because the IMU starts drifting. Mm. Okay, so in that sense, I would like to explore both. But then again, we have to see what is the accuracy which this fellow is giving on the uh, roll pitch and yaw. Yeah, so the, these uh, sensors are specifically for uh, INS systems, but uh, these companies also have an option in such a way that, like, they come with the IMU, but GPS also can be purchased separately and uh, included with it. So some options are in that fashion. Okay. So first looking at this SBG INS systems, so the uh, yeah so this one they are these are specifically recommended for unmanned surface vessels okay so this was the accuracy of app gd model so now they, does this have coverage in india uh, that uh, i'm not pretty much sure about it okay the reason why I ask this is uh, what I have observed is uh, most of the times a satellite based correction is required that yeah. the paper we were just looking at right NTRIP protocol on that they publish corrections which can be received by the sensor and then it corrects for the error in the localization hmm. but NTRIP for India is not yet available because Indian government has still not yet gotten to the point uh, where we have a coverage over the entire subcontinent. So most of the places where we are restricted to right now is I think somewhere around Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and to the northwest of that. Understood. Okay, so Punjab and all we have good amount of sensors in the base stations which transmit this NTRIP protocol. But down south in Chennai, if we want to do it, we don't have a good base station close by. And these base stations typically, what, from what I have understood is, should be within a plus or minus 10 kilometer range. Okay. They suggest 35 kilometers, but then that is not really where it really operates well. From what I have understood, it should be plus or minus 10 kilometers. So since we won't have that option with us, we will be necessarily having to go for a base station or uh, what you call to be set up. Understood. Okay. Right? So in that base station may be set up in our department rooftop from where we are be trying to see the lake that is also possible because we won't be more than a kilometer or uh, two kilometers from the lake. Yeah. Right. So that is possible. But uh, the problem with these things is that when they specify these things, we do not know for sure whether they have coverage there or not. Yeah, that's true. We don't know whether we, they have coverage. Okay. Can you go to another website? There is one website called rdusimple.com. Which one, sir? Are you? Rdu. A R D U. A R D U. Simple. S I M P L E. Just press enter. I think that should do that. Yeah. This is a website where I was looking for the GPS receive receivers. Can you go under products on the top and look at RTK starter kits? And they also explain about how RTK works and all that is there. This website seems to be pretty good. Come down a little bit. So, yeah, base plus rover kits. I think that's what we are looking for. And we are mostly looking in the long range region, 10 kilometers. So look at the third option here. Uh, no, third option is XLR. Look at the second one, LR. Long range kits. Click on that. Yeah, so this seems to be a good option is what I was zeroing on. This will cost about 700 euros is what my estimate is. But again, how much will be the customs is unknown at this point of time. We'll look at it. 
but if you look at uh, when you go back up to products again yes i i wanted to show you guys uh, something else uh, rtk corrections yeah come down yeah so there are multiple channels on which and multiple constellations that you can try to get it from so you can see on the top a little bit up yeah multi band on the right hand side you see gps l1 gps l2 l2c yeah right and then glonus we have l1 and l2c these are the most common ones nowadays even the chinese one is available which will allow us but what is happening with these augmentation services is that they are only offering them in either us or europe okay they are not offering that correction service across india which is why we are having to settle for a base station and a this one so otherwise what would have happened that satellite correction signal we have to purchase okay mm-hmm. and i don't want to do that right so in that sense we need to know whenever we are zeroing on on the sensors one thing is what is the roll pitch and yaw accuracy so if you go back to your spreadsheet so we want to understand what is the roll pitch accuracy what is the position accuracy okay and we may want to have a specific column for each of them so that we can make active comparison okay and then whether raw support is available or not that is very important for us because we need to make this work with ross yeah and we need to at least see a 10 hertz or above uh, gps update rate mm. so when they provide a gps signal that update rate should be at least 10 hertz or more in the more the better okay whether uh, ashwin the Well, your robot, which you were trying to design with CFI, did that use a GPS? It did. Yes, it did use a GPS. We did not use this INS thing. We were using a plain drone GPS. What was the? Update? It did not. It did not have centimeter accuracy. What was the update rate on it? Yeah, it had a really high update rate. Like how much? I'm not sure, but I think it will be about ten hertz. It's a drone GPS. Could you find out its spec and uh, how? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I can do that. Also, yeah. Uh, if you, I'm not sure if you actually need one centimeter accuracy. A drone GPS will actually work really good if you don't need like that. I need speed. about ten centimeter accuracy because my model is about three meters long. A hundred of it is. Is three centimeters, right? So plus or minus three centimeters should more or less do the job for me. So three ten centimeters should be enough. Okay, I look at how much accuracy those drone GPS has. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's try to do that. And also, Manoranjan, can you see whether you can get a quote from these people for these two products? Yeah, sure, sir. We can ask them. And. Uh, There is one company which offers uh, GPS services, which are called Leica, and but their products seem to be very expensive. Oh. Let's also see what they have in range, just to see whether the spec match up well or not. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it, it's called Leica. I think. L Y S O N spelling L. Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> I think. L E I C A M E. Ah, I think I lost you, my dear sir. L E I C A, I think. Hmm, it's breaking for me. Uh, is it the same for others, or is it my problem? Leica, L E I C A. Still breaking. One second, sir. I think there is an issue is from my end. Okay, we I see it. Yeah, man, we can hear you. 
but these are more proprietary systems so these will be extremely expensive and uncustomizable so which means that we can't uh, change them to our requirements that will be one of the problems okay so can we go back to the sheet manoranjan once okay what do we have under gps alone Oh, sir, there is a small issue from my end. I think uh, some internet issues. I'll rejoin again, sir. Can Vallabh or Aditya present? Aditya, could could you present the? If you have access to the same sheet, could you present? Yes. Sir, I'm presenting. Ah, yes, yes, I'm able to see it. Okay, can we go under the GPS? Okay, claims millimeter level accuracy. Who is this fellow? Hemisphere A forty five, one degree roll, one degree five meters, five centimeters heave, point zero five degrees heading, point one degree heading, GNSS based heading, eight mm position RTK. Can you look at their uh, website link? both are from mhp right and these are more industrial grade right hmm. the one which i had sent you the audio simple that one which i was looking at correct these are more for uh, home based and robotic application based things and these are much cheaper see it is only costing about 700 euros means about 60000 So it's well within our budget, but if we are looking for something over ten lakhs and so, then the problem with that is uh, we'll have to go through a lot of purchase purchasing hoops to get that product. Am I making sense here? Yes. Okay. So in that sense, let's try to see whether there are any cheaper products, and let's try to get a more extensive list. contact vishwa i think he had some more suggestions which we are not making into the list mm. so i'll also try to add some more into this and then we'll try to take a call on it in the coming week okay okay sir. but this is good work i think we need uh, some more information though also when we are looking at it see whether if if they have not specified it on their website whether they have coverage in india maybe shoot out an email to each of these fellows Hmm. and just uh, see whether they are able to give us a reply that whether this is possible if we want to use this somewhere in india okay i think you can separate that list out manoranjan you can depute a couple of them couple of the guild members yeah to split it out and send out the emails to the different people also look at the paper which we saw today that fellow's gps seems to be interesting don't know how much it costs helmet helmet reach rtk i'm going to check it out later just to see whether it is in the pretty expensive no for sure 2199 dollars centimeter level single band 799 dollars UAV mapping, single band, multi band, four ninety nine dollars. See, these are more achievable. Mm. Again, when he talks about NTRIP, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Me, share my screen. Yeah. So when they talk about conductions over the internet. The, the we have to be careful about this whether this is going to be offered in india or not auto pilot for raspberry pi powered by audio pilot and ross the great community so they they seem to have some support for this sort of a thing as well with support from ross and gnss receiver dual imu yeah this seems to be a good product we can explore so 
rather than go the industrial route let us try to focus a little bit more on the applications for robotics and see whether we can find some good products which are more useful for us that that is my point okay okay sir all right okay maybe i can stop recording for today